Hello second graders, I'm excited to be back with you on our last day of our virtual math and my name is Mrs. Smithy. I teach second grade at Stockwell Elementary and today you're going to need your day eight guided worksheet and a pencil a little bit later. So go ahead and make sure you have those supplies with you today. Our code word today is summer, S-U-M-M-E-R because we are all ready for summer. So go ahead and write that down. And we're going to do a fun refuel today called 5 and 45. This is something you probably did in your classroom as well this year. It's just a way for us to get some moving, some movements, and um, practice focusing on certain movements as well. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to do four movements, and we're going to do them all together, but we're going to practice each one. So. Our first move that we're going to do today is just a big stretch up. And that's one of my favorite movements because it just feels really good. You can even stand on your tiptoes if you want to, to stretch your arms way up. So we're going to start with a stretch up. The next movement is going to be our hand to our toe. So you're going to take one hand and you're going to tap your opposite toe and you're going to take your other hand and you're going to tap your opposite toe. But we're going to do those together. So do both of those with me, okay? We're going to do a big stretch up. And then our, our hand to our toe. And then the other side. Okay. And then we're going to add another movement on. And it's a march five times in place. So you just one, two, three, four, five. Okay? So do all three of those with me. Go ahead and do that big stretch up. Then your hand to your toe, hand to your other toe, and then march five times. One, two, three, four, five. All right, great job. Our last movement is going to be one turnaround. So you may want to look straight ahead, and then you're just going to turn around until you get right back to that spot. Okay? Let's go ahead and try all four of those movements together now. Big stretch up. Hand to toe, hand to toe. March five times. One, two, three, four, five. Spin around once. All right. We're going to do all four of those together two times in a row. Okay, do you think you can do that with me? We're just gonna go to each one and then we're gonna start at the beginning and go through each one again. All right, so go ahead and get to your ready position. Remember, make sure you've got space around you. You're standing up nice and tall. Your shoulders are relaxed. And big stretch up, hand to toe, hand to toe. One, two, three, four, five. And then one more time. Big stretch up, hand to toe, hand to toe. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Big spin around. Yours may have been a quick spin. All right, nice job. Thanks for doing that with me today. All right, our target for today is I can use addition and subtraction within 100 to solve real world problems. I can represent my answer using drawings and equations. We're going to find information in a problem to help us answer a comparison question and then use evidence to prove our answer. We're going to be doing a different type of comparison problem today, and we're also going to be working all the way up to 100. So we are going to need our mathematician thinking caps today because this is going to be a very challenging lesson, but I know you're ready for it, okay? All right. Let's review what we talked about last time and comparing numbers. So what are some words that you may hear in a word problem that would make you realize that we are going to be comparing numbers. Hopefully these came to your mind. Greater than, less than, more than, fewer. How many more or how many fewer or even what's the difference? All right, so we have a word problem we're going to look at. Um, first today, and it's going to go along with our video here in a minute. But we're going to read through the problem, and again, we're going to find those two things that are in every word problem, the information it gives us and the question. 
So today's problem says Ian's tower has six fewer blocks than Zim's. Zim's tower has 19 blocks. How many blocks does Ian's tower have? Do you see that question in there? How many blocks does Ian's tower have? So do we know how many blocks Ian has? Nope, that's what we're going to be finding today. So we found our question, let's go back and see what information we do know. Ian's tower has six fewer blocks than Zim's. Does it have six blocks? No, it has six fewer blocks. So we already know that who has more blocks? Ian or Zim? Zim, right? Because it just tells, it just told us that Ian has fewer blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and make my two bars here. I'm going to make Ian's shorter than Zim's. Zim's tower has 19 blocks. So do we know Zim's number? Yes, we know Zim's has 19. Now we don't know how many Ian's has, but it did give us a clue about Ian's tower. What information did it give us? It said he had six fewer. So we know that he, if Zim has 19, Ian's has six fewer. So this part right here is six. If Ian had those six blocks, he'd have the same amount as Zim, right? So we want to know how many Ian's tower does have, though. Not just how many fewer he has than Zim. So now we have our part, part, whole model here. What is an equation that we could use to solve this problem? Do you think you already know what the answer might be? Let's go ahead and watch as we find the difference between their towers, okay? I want you to think which way makes more sense to you. How do you know how many blocks Ian has on his tower? In this lesson, you will learn how to solve word problems by comparing. Let's review. To quickly draw one one, you can make a dot. Ten ones makes a ten. Just draw a quick line to show ten. Ten tens makes one hundred. Draw a square to represent one hundred. What is a bar model? If we have a whole piece of something, say a piece of gum, we can break it into two parts, one part and the other part. Both together would make the whole piece. Ian and Zim have been building block towers at the Children's Museum. Ian says, my tower is taller. And Zim says, my tower has more blocks. Well, if Sim's tower has more blocks, how many blocks does Ian's tower have? Let's see, what information is in this word problem? Ian's tower has six fewer blocks than Zim's. Zim's tower has 19 blocks. How many blocks does Ian's tower have? Ian's tower has six fewer blocks than Zim's. Fewer means less, right? That's right, Ian. Zim's tower has 19 blocks. What question are we trying to answer? How many blocks does Ian's tower have? Let's see if we can find out, Ian. When we compare two numbers, we find the difference. Zim has 19 blocks. Ian has six fewer. Yes, Ian, you need to find the difference. 
how can we find the difference? I can use place value blocks to compare. 19 is 10 and 9. 6 is 6 ones. Well, there's one tens and six more ones in Ian's tower. So 19 minus 6, what was the difference? One ten is 10 and six ones is 13. I subtracted. Can we compare it another way? I can use a bar model. Okay, Zim, show us what you did. I know my tower has more. Ian's has fewer. So I'm going to put 19 as the whole. For the two parts, I'm going to put the six fewer and how many that's Ian's tower. Together they make the 19 that's mine. 19 minus 6 equals, hmm, what does it equal? 10 minus 0 equals 10. 9 minus 6 equals 3. So 10 plus 3 equals 13. How do you know how many blocks Ian has on his tower? We both compared it different ways. My tower has 13 blocks. Which model makes the most sense to you? Ian's or Zim's? Can you think of another way? In this lesson you have learned how to solve word problems by comparing. Okay, for our next part you're going to need your guided worksheet today. We're going to work through the first two problems on this paper together. And what we're going to do is read the problem, find that information that they're giving us. We're going to create a model, we're going to create an equation, and then we're going to calculate our answer. Those are pretty much the same steps we've been doing when solving a word problem. Deontay has seven fewer pipe cleaners than Kendrick. Kendrick has 26 pipe cleaners. How many pipe cleaners does Deontay have? Okay, so first we're going to find that question. What are we really trying to answer in this problem? How many pipe cleaners does Deontay have? We don't know how many he has exactly. Let's look at the information we do know. Deontay has seven fewer pipe cleaners than Kendrick. Kendrick has 26 pipe cleaners. Let's go ahead and set up a bar model. And let's show a bar for Deontay. And for Kendrick. And how do we know who has more pipe cleaners right now? It says Deontay has seven fewer. So that means that we know Kendrick has more. So his bar is going to be longer. How many pipe cleaners did Kendrick have? 26. Do we know how many pipe cleaners Deontay has? No, we're going to put an X there because we don't know what that number is yet. That's the question we're trying to answer. But did it give us a clue about Deontay's pipe cleaners? It says he has seven fewer than Kendrick. So right here, would be those seven fewer that he has. Kendrick has 26, Deontay's missing seven, seven of them, so we can use that to figure out how many he actually does have. All right, using our model, let's write an equation. I bet you can go ahead and write an equation that would go with this model. Go ahead and do that on your paper. There's two different equations we can write. We could start with our whole number here, 26, 
that Kendrick has, if you take away the part that we know is missing, he's missing seven of those pipe cleaners, we'll be left with how many Deontay actually has. Or we could start, and we know that he needed seven pipe cleaners. So how many did he have that with those seven missing pipe cleaners, he would have 26 just like Kendrick? Take the part, add, how much do we need to add to that other part to get to that hole? And now we can find our answer. What is the answer for 26 minus 7? Or 7 plus how many would equal 26? Use a strategy if you need to. Go ahead and find your answer on your paper. Well, I could use base 10 models. That's a strategy. Remember, we've talked about expanded form. We also could use a number line. I think I'm going to use base 10 models for 26 minus 7. So if you use the base 10 model strategy, it may have looked like this. 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And we had to take away 7 ones. I did not have 7 ones here. So I'm going to need to ungroup. I'm going to need to take a 10 and smash it into 10 ones so that I have enough to take away. I'm going to take away that 10 and turn it into ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I have enough to take away 7 of them. I'm just going to cross them out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Do I need to take away any 10s? No, just 7 ones. So I'm left with a 10 and 9 ones. That would be, I'm going to go ahead and put my answer right down here because I'm running out of room. 19. Well, let's check with another strategy for the equation 7 plus x equals 26 and see if we get the same thing. So I'm going to use the number line for that. So I'm just going to draw a number line over here. You notice I'm using all my blank space to fill up with evidence and models and drawings. So you should have lots of room to be able to show all of your work. So I'm going to start with 7 that we have. And I need to get to 26. So how many do I need to add? Remember, I want to get to a friendly number. So from 7 to maybe... 10 would be how many? A jump of 3. And then from 10, I could jump to 20. That would be a jump of 10. And then from 20, I could jump to my 26, and that would be a jump of 6. I had to jump 3, 10, and 6. So what would all of those be together? 3 and 6 is 9, plus 10 would be 19. So again, we have 19. Now, what should we label our 19 as? What are we talking about here? Pipe cleaners, right? Let's see if this is a reasonable answer. It doesn't ask us to check that, but that's something we should always be thinking about. If we put this 19 into this missing spot, would that make sense? If Kendrick has 26 pipe cleaners, and if we say Deontay has about 20, and he needed about 10 more, that means uh, that would be about 30, and that's pretty close to 26. So without doing all that math, I should be able to get around that answer. That's a good estimate. That's a reasonable answer 
to me. So 19 pipe cleaners. Make sure you have a complete answer with a model, an equation. You probably need a strategy. We're getting into some bigger numbers. And your answer has a label. All of those pieces need to be included in your answer. That's what that big blank space is for. Okay, let's move on to the next problem. This one is not the same type of problem, but I want you to see using what you know about bar models and using the information from the problem, if you can figure out how to solve this problem. I bet you can. Let's read it together though. Caden has 38 more purple stones than green stones on his video game. He has 25 green stones. How many purple stones does Caden have? Go ahead and underline your question for me in there. Find that question. What are we trying to answer here? How many purple stones does Caden have? We need to find those purple stones. Go back and see what information it gives us. Caden has 38 more purple stones than green stones on his video game. He has 25 green stones. See if you can't draw a model that would represent what's happening in this problem. Do you have an idea? What are we comparing in this problem? Is it two people? No, it's purple stones and green stones. So I'm going to make a bar for purple stones and I'm going to make a bar for green stones. Does that give you a clue? Does it tell us how many stones Caden has? Nope, that's the question it's asking us. Does it tell us how many green stones he has? 25, so you should have a bar for the green stones showing 25. All right, now we have a starting point. We don't know how many stones Caden has or how many purple stones Caden has. Does he have more purple stones or fewer? He has more purple stones, so this bar should be longer. Do we know how many purple stones though? No, but it does tell us he has 38 more purple stones than he has green stones. So he has just as many purple stones as green, which is 25, plus he has 38 more. Mmm. See how we use the information and we created our own bar model to represent that information. Now go ahead and write your equation that would match this model. It's a little different. This isn't our hole down here right now. Which one should you be focused on? Your purple stone model. How could we find out how many purple stones there are if we know it's the same amount as the green and 38 more? What did your equation look like? If you add those two together, we should be able to get how many purple stones he has. I'm just going to put an X there because we don't know yet. We still have to calculate our answer. 
So go ahead and use a strategy to solve 25 plus 38 now so we can find out how many purple stones he actually has. If you have time and you want to check it with a second strategy, that's a really good practice to, to have. We give you about 30 seconds to get that answer. All right, let's look at two different strategies. I'll show you what two different strategies looks like, and maybe you chose one of those strategies and you can check your work with me. The first one we're going to do is base 10 models, okay? So I'm gonna show that one right here. 25 plus 38, that means we need to draw both of those numbers because we're adding them together. So 25 would be two tens and five ones. And then 38 would be three tens and eight ones. And then we need to find out how many ones and tens we have in all. Do you happen to see a group of 10 down there? Because I think I can regroup and put some, ten, some ones together to make a new 10. I know I have eight and then two more would be 10. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to turn it into a 10. We're just going to trade it, We're trading them in. Now I can count my ones that I have left. I have three and my tens. I'm going to count that 10 I just traded. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's check it using another strategy. How about we do expanded form this time? Do you remember how to do expanded form? You break each number into their value. So 25 would have two tens, which is a value of 20 plus five ones. So 25, we break it apart into 20 plus five. We could break apart 38 into 30 plus eight. And then we can add our ones together and our tens together. So five and eight make 13. 20 and 30 make 50. And you know I like to decompose this 13 into 10 and three. Any way to make it quicker and easier in my head. So if I look at this as 50 plus 10 plus three instead of 50 plus 13, I know 50 plus 10 would be 60 plus the 3 would be 63. What are we going to label our answer as? 63, now not just stones, right? Because we're comparing stones. We need 63 purple stones. Let's see if that makes sense. If we have about 30 plus about 40, that would give us 70. And 63 is pretty close to 70. That seems like it would be a reasonable answer. You have one more problem that you're going to do on your own about pizza. So go ahead and read through that. And you guys have worked so hard through the, the summer. You are rock stars. I just want you to know I appreciate you paying attention and working so hard. And now you get to enjoy your summer. And Mrs. Smithy's going to enjoy her summer. I've got my hat and my sunglasses ready. Have a good summer, guys.